Assalamualaikum and good day. Today we continue with our lecture through YouTube because of COVID-19. We continue with chapter 4, Stand Alone Photovoltaic Power System, SAPV. So table of content of this note, we start with introduction. Number 2, application of stand alone PV power system. Number 3, Trap of system number four AC couple and DC couple system and then schematic diagram number six system sizing seven diesel engine generator set. Okay, we start with introduction. Stand alone PV or SAPV system are designed to operate independent of the electric utility grid and are generally designed and sized to supply certain DC and or AC electrical load. So for this system, you need to know the capacity of DC and AC load. So you can design the PV system that's suitable to supply this load. So this type of system may be powered by a PV array only or may use wind, engine generator, or utility power as an auxiliary power source in what is called a PV hybrid system. So the simplest type of standalone PV system is a direct couples. So these direct couples, example here in this picture. So this direct couple will connect PV array direct to DC load with MPPT or sometimes we call DC to DC converter so there is no battery storage so the DC output of PV module or array is directly connected to a DC load since there is no electrical energy storage in direct coupled system, so the load only operate during sunlight hours. So making this design suitable for common applications such as ventilation, water pump and small circulation pump for solar thermal water heating system. So it is very important to matching the impedance of the electrical load to the maximum power output of the PV array is a critical part of designing well performed direct couple system which is we design start from the load and then we match with the supply for certain loads such as positive replacement water pump a type of electronic dc to dc converter called a maximum power point tracker mppt is used between the pv array and load to help better utilize the available array maximum power output so how this MPPT work let's open some picture here so this MPPT let me zoom in so this is how PV array performance varies with the variation of solar irradiant and temperature. So this is an example of the variation of solar irradiant and temperature. Okay, at low solar irradiant, it will produce low power. So how this MPPT will detect this maximum power point for each curve? So this MPPT is actually an algorithm that implement in the photovoltaics inverter to continuously adjust the impedance seized by the solar energy to keep the PV system operating at or close to the peak okay. to the peak power point of a PV panels under any variation of solar irradiance and temperature. So example here, this one, this is the peak value, which is 100. 
watt. So at solar irradiant, 800 watt per square meter. So this is the maximum power point, which is 64.9 watt. So this MPPT should extract this maximum point at this point. Okay. So MPPT algorithm are typically used in the controller design of a FIV system. So the algorithm account for factors such as, again, variable or solar irradiant and the temperature to ensure that the PV system generate maximum power for all times. So some uh, common MPPT algorithm that they use in the system, for example, uh, perturb and observe technique. Some of them use uh, heat climbing technique. And uh, another one is incremental conduction technique. Okay. So all this MPPT algorithm is designed inside the controller. So for this course, we not emphasize about the MPPT algorithm or MPPT technique. Let's continue with the notes. So in many standalone PV system, batteries are commonly used for energy storage. Although PV system will generally have some means of storing energy to accommodate a predefined period of insufficient sunshine, there may still be exceptional period of poor weather when an alternative source is required to guarantee production a uh, power production. So PV hybrid system combine a photovoltaic generator with another power source typically a diesel generator but occasionally another renewable and supply such as wind turbine so all this combination we call hybrid system so the pv generator will usually be sized to meet the base load with the alternative supply example this generator set being called into action only when essential. This arrangement offer all the benefit of PV in respect of low operation and maintenance cost, but additionally ensure a secure supply. So let's see the example how this PV generator can support the base load. Okay, let's see this curve. So example here, this is power demand during winter time and this is the power demand during summer. So in Malaysia, we always have this bell shape eh, because we don't have this four season. So Malaysia, we will have this kind of a curve for the power demand. So therefore, during daytime, with the sufficient sunlight, so this area is a daytime Okay, for example here, daytime, with the sufficient sunlight, PV system can be used to meet the base load or base load demand because of low operation and maintenance cost. But it is a really good to design PV system that can be able to meet demand for base load intermediate and peak so for example the normal load is only 10% of the peak demand so the normal load here is only 10% of peak demand so it is very efficient that we use PV system other than diesel genset Let's go to the next one. This is example, uh, the picture 
that we took at Kampung Punan, Keluan Johor. This is PV hybrid sister, which is PV array. This is a PV array. So this is the diesel genset. This is the, the tank for the diesel. Then below the PV array, we have this the, the container that consists of the inverter. So application of standalone PV system. So SAPV is really using for pumping system to supply water to village for land irrigation or livestock watering, for example, for cows and sheep farms. Refrigeration system, particularly to preserve vaccine, blood and other consumable vital to healthcare programs. Lighting for homes and community buildings such as, such as schools and health center to enable education and income generation activity to continue after death. So some of the SAPV system used as a battery charging station to recharge battery which are used to power appliances ranging from torch and radio to television and light. So usually for rural area, for, res for residential area, we have SAP SAPV solar home system that provide power for domestic lighting and other DC appliances or, DC appl uh, or AC appliances such as TV, radio, sewing machine, etc. So this is another example of PV hybrid system at Sekolah Kebangsaan Kalabakan Sabah. Same concept, we have a PV array here and also generator. Okay, let's go to the type of system. So, commonly we have three type of system of standalone PV system, which is direct couple, PV battery, and PV battery genset. So, direct couple, power from PV directly supply to the load through the maximum power point tracker that I explained before, which is this DC to DC converter or FPPT will extract the maximum power from the PV array. So, no energy storage, in example, battery. So, the system only work during sunny day time. Another one is PV battery. So this PV battery system, the PV used to supply power to the load during daytime. So battery is used as an energy storage medium. So before you connect your solar panel, you must so you, before you connect your solar panel to the battery, make sure you go it through the charge controller or DC to DC converter. So the excess power is stored in the battery using charge controller for night uses. So from solar panel, go to the charge controller and the charge, from the charge controller, we'll, it will go through inverter. So this inverter will convert DC to AC because from solar panel, the output power is DC convert to AC and then supply to the AC load. So the excess power from this go to the battery. So this battery can be used during night time. Okay. Okay, other than battery for energy storage medium, some of the small single purpose PV system, they use a, a, a flywheel or capacitor. 
flywheel or capacitor to replace the battery bank. Okay, that one also acceptable, but that one only for a small single purpose PV system. Okay, next one is PV battery genset. So the working principle is quite similar with the PV battery system. However, this surgeon set DEG can be designed as a backup power to provide continuous base load. Okay, PV battery genset sometimes we call PV hybrid system. So again, PV array to connect to DC load and battery, we must use a charge controller. Okay. So this charge controller will control the charging and discharging process of the battery. So this battery can be used to supply the DC load and also PV array is used to charge the battery. So this DEG, Diesel genset generator is a designed to back up the power supply. So this DG can be directly connected to AC load because the output is AC. And when when you want to use to charge the battery, we need to convert from AC to DC by using rectifier. So for the battery to to supply the AC load, so we need to convert from DC to AC. So that is a that is a type of system direct couple PV battery and PV battery genset. Now we go to the AC couple and DC couple system. So DC couple. So DC couple system. The advantages is the advantages are it has been widely used for a small system because it can be designed to power a small load. Okay, because this is the DC bus. Eh? DC bus, a uh, DC we cannot transmit for a long distance. So DC bus is used as a common bus. Uh, this is the common bus. So the battery can connect can connect directly to this bus. DC load also can be used directly, no inverter required, thus reduce the power losses in the system. So this system is flexible because different technology can be mixed in one project. So from PV array, we have this charge controller to charge the battery, desergent set. So this desergent set, we need a charger. This convert AC to DC. Uh, this is inverter that convert DC to AC and supply to AC load. So the, the, the disadvantages of this system. So DC power is quite difficult to step up and step down for a long distance power distribution. So this DC appliances or DC load are not easily available. If available, it's also quite expensive compared to AC load. And this DC system also undergoes no switching. So no period, so the current flow in a single direction with steady voltage. So this DC system is prone to lose power as a heat. Okay, let's go to AC couple. So many sites in Sabah, Malaysia has been installed using this type of system. So this one is suitable for a, a large system compared to DC couple. So advantages of the AC bus 
is used as a common bus. So this is the AC bus used as a common bus. Uh, AC load can directly connected to this bus. So the system is expandable. So AC bus can be directly connected to AC load. Easy to distribute power through AC transmission line, especially for, for, for long distance transmission. Why this AC is suitable for long distance transmission? Because um, this AC can be easily converted to higher or lower value by using transformer. The disadvantages of this system is it's glued to certain technologies, rigid and difficult to replace with other technology in future, usually not work with different technology, and this system not available for small system. So let's see this picture. So we have one, two, three. So three power source from the solar system so this PV array connected to the power conditioning and to the AC bus so this power conditioning unit for the PV array so we have one two and three so this unit for PV array sometimes called as an inverter which is it convert from DC to AC so another power conditioning is from the wind generator. So this power conditioning unit for wind generator is used for smoothing the wind turbine output power. It also consists of power converter and ultra capacitor to smooth the variable wind power to minimize Rapid power excursion that may damage sensitive local load. Okay. So after all this power conditioning, and then you can connect to AC bus. So here we have bidirectional converter or bidirectional inverter. So from the AC bus, so AC will convert into DC to charge the battery so we, this one we also call as a charge controller at the same time we call it bidirectional because other than AC to DC it also can convert from AC to DC which is the DC gen set it used to charge the battery and also this DC gen set can be used to supply the AC load through the AC bus. Okay, number five. The schematic diagram. So this figure shows a typical schematic diagram of PV battery system. So we have here, this is the PV array. So this PV array is combination of PV module in series and also a parallel connection of the parallel string. So this PV array connect to the charge controller which is a DC to DC of converter. Usually we use MPPT, so MPPT or PWM charge controller. So this charge controller will connect to the DC load and also to the battery. So this is for the protection, we have battery fuse. So to supply to the AC load, we need an inverter which convert DC to AC. So the principal operation of the system is as follow. So when the PV module receives the sunlight, so the power generated from the PV module is used to charge the battery 
as well as to providing power to DC and AC load. So this charge controller will control the charging process and monitor the battery status. So we have three stages of charging process commonly used in the commonly used in the process, which is we call bulk, absorption, and float. So what is bulk? So bulk we charge the we charge the charge controller allow the maximum current and this is the current from the PV array to charge the battery okay this stage okay this area so it will allow the maximum current from the PV array to charge the battery so if using MPPT type of charge controller the current might not be maximum but the power from PV is maximum so the battery terminal voltage increase and the bulk charging stage stop at 80 to 90 percent of state of charge. So the current will maximum until state of charge SOC 80 to 90 percent. And then to maintain the output voltage. So the current already 80 to 90 in this stage. And then to maintain the output voltage. So the current will slowly drop until the battery is fully charged. So this stage, the battery is fully charged, which is state of charge is 100%. Okay, so that one is absorption, which is constant power, but we, we decrease the current. And then float, which is we maintain the battery, we maintain the voltage okay, to maintain the full charge. The charge controller reduce the voltage slightly. Okay. by using pulse wave modulation pulses. So the inverter is used if the AC power is required. So that one is here. When, the, when there is an AC load, we need an inverter because from the PV array and the battery, the output is DC. I think I will stop here. Okay, we will continue our lecture next time on number 6, sister sizing. Okay, thank you. See you again.